Hi, my name is Lee Caswell. I'm here at the VP of Marketing for the VMware HCI VU, and we're thrilled today to have Colin Gallagher of Hitachi Vantera to come and talk about how we're working together to make hyperconverged infrastructure, HCI, work for you, our customers and partners. Thanks, Lee. I'm Colin Gallagher. I'm VP of Marketing for Infrastructure Solutions at Hitachi Vantara, and we're really excited to talk to you about some interesting things that we're seeing in the HCI market. Yeah, I think for a lot of companies, and certainly Hitachi Vantara figured this out early, right, is that supporting servers is one thing, right? Supporting storage is another thing. When you bring them together, right, there's a new standard, right, for how you're yeah. going to look at those servers, and then to the extent that you think about network config and other mm -hmm. things, right? Now you've got stateful storage spanning those servers in a hyperconverged infrastructure model, and that really means that you need to be thinking and planning up front, right, in a way that gives you enterprise yep. reliability. Yeah, I mean, it's something that the server folks took for granted, but never understood was data resiliency <laughs> and, and, and data gravity in some sense. And right. so sort of, you know, as we've gone to market, we've seen that that's some of the things we have to educate our customers about is, yeah. is there are things, because hyperconverge is largely sold to a server market. Yeah. And we have to teach them some of these basics, you know, storage concepts that they might be underwear. We don't have to bog them down with all the details and yeah. lawn sizes exactly. and cylinders back in the day, but yep. we do need to teach them basic concepts like, like you know, data resiliency, data gravity, so they can understand the, the complexity of that. And you know, one of the things for our partners, you know, what they found is that early installations of HCI, right? If they were small and outside the data center, I mean, there was there weren't a lot of services in those early installations. And yet today, as we've moved into databases and core applications, right, and mission critical strategic infrastructure, well, now the services aspects, right, of DR, right, backup mm -hmm. about. Uh, data migration yeah. services, right? All of these become extremely interesting and important and profitable. Yeah, totally. There's a tremendous opportunity for our partners to build services around that, particularly as you mentioned, as HCI has gone mainstream, it's gone large scale. You know, even if customers wanted to do a lot of that themselves, they don't have the time, capacity, skill set to do that. Right. So that's a prime opportunity for our partners to come in and add value and yeah. make money. Yeah. Well, it's interesting, you know, from a VMware standpoint, uh, the software element is usually our lead story. Um, and then with partners who now bring additional software, unique yeah. software, and really enterprise resilient hardware, mm -hmm. man, that's a really interesting part when wrapped in support, right? Yeah. How important is the support aspect, would you say, for the customers of HCI type installations? I think it's incredible. I think, you know, when we talk to our customers about it, it's one of the top three reasons um, they're looking to choose HCI. Mm. Uh, they want, and particularly, you know, a solution that from a vendor that they don't build themselves. Yes. You know, because obviously the customers we talk to have made a decision up front already. Yep. They're not going to go and, you know, you know, buy VCN off the shelf and buy some of the servers. They're going to come to us because they want sure. a more integrated solution. Yeah. But when we ask them why, they say we want that integrated solution because we want a, a unified support experience. Yep. We want to be able to call and have, you know, the problem resolved, whether it be a server problem, whether it be a storage problem, sure. whether it happens to be a network problem, we're looking for that, you know, I hate to say it, that one throat to choke, it's sort of a, <laughs> a negative connotation, but they want that single point of contact for support. Yeah, one source of delight. How's exactly. that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another way to say it. Well, you know, that's one of the things that we do, this joint certification together. Um, I mean, that's an investment on both of our parts, yeah. right? To make sure that customers have continued support of whether it's components, right, of uh, software components. And then this lifecycle management over time, right? I mean, I think that's an extremely yeah. important part where customers, particularly as they become more generalists, right? You know, storage has always been kind of an arcane mm -hmm. area, right? Where knowing Q depths and stripe sizes and random read write ratios, I mean, yeah. What we're finding, right, is that for our modern customer, they're really being driven by the apps. Mm -hmm. And if you think about the changing nature of applications, they're changing fast which means you need infrastructure that can yeah. change quickly as well. And so it's that quick response, right? I call it quick twitch response. <laughs> so the infrastructure can change at the face yeah. of applications. That's driving a new level of resiliency and a new level of, uh, let's call it infrastructure responsiveness. Yeah, I, mean, I think if you look, you know, what some of the, the hyperscale providers have done, you know, when you go and build something out in the, in the public cloud, yeah. you, you know, you, you're not setting stripe size, you're not setting queue depths, you're right. saying, how much capacity do I need, at what performance level do I need, and you know, maybe some, a few other resiliency capabilities. Yeah. But that's it. And yep. that's, and that's as you said before, that's the expectation that's been set in the market that yeah. no one's going to go back to and say, you know, oh, I, I want all these other pieces of information. It's like, no, this is what I want, figure out a way to provide it. And that's something that ACI does really well, yeah. is because it abstracts a lot of that complexity. But to your point, making something easy is actually hard. 
Yeah. And, and so what we've done <laughs> in that joint certification is all that interoperability to make sure we can actually deliver that service level as, as promised without having to, to put the end user on micromanaging all these different settings. Yeah. I'm finding, right, that uh, you know, our users today, right, they've been managing applications, VMs, mm -hmm. for example, and the idea to have a VM-centric way to manage storage attributes and compute attributes, right? To be able to look at RAM and CPU allocations, right? As well as IOPS and capacity. I mean, this is a really interesting way to give a unified view and being able to manage applications yeah. and their performance and capacity needs. Yeah, I mean, it's totally what our customers are looking for and expecting. You know, mm -hmm. I, I hear that VM centric all the time from them. It's yeah. I want to be. A, I want to approach things from a VM centric point of view. I want to look, you know, sort of from the VM down and see everything that because right. that's how they. That's how they want to manage the infrastructure. That's how they want to troubleshoot problems. It's a whole different perspective from sort of looking at three at different levels and then trying to stitch them all together. Yeah, working together will also be adding container support, of course, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. so. You'll see this strategy that VMware's had since the day day one, really, right? I mean, what you can follow with VMware is if you think of phase one is running on top of an OS, even right. That was vSphere got basically ESXi was the integration of a hypervisor into a operating system, right? Similarly, vSAN, right, was the integration of a storage stack into the hypervisor, and now we're taking Kubernetes, bringing that into the hypervisor. It's a great way for us to remain relevant right, to our customers and the fact that people aren't really targeted with building infrastructure as much as they're building with, or targeted with uh, supporting applications. Yeah, totally, and particularly as applications sort of get con containerized into, and into microservices, yeah. and customers are looking to have some things run on-prem, and some things run in, in one cloud, something run in, in a service provider, and be able to stitch those all together, containers become even more important. Yeah, I mean, we're looking at this software-defined world, right, as almost a platform, right, that now extends across hardware, on-prem, into the public cloud, and now can run applications of any type yeah. going forward. Or, and wherever they happen to be. And wherever they happen to be, yeah, yeah. Great, well listen, Colin, it's been a thrill to have you here. Great to just talk yeah. storage, <laughs> HCI, VVOLs, right, the mm -hmm. full gamut, and about how our customers together are working jointly to solve real customer needs. Thank you so much for coming, and we're looking forward to a lot of great partnership together. No thanks, happy to be here, really enjoy spending time with you, Lee, as you know, <laughs> yeah. and let's take a selfie. Always. <laughs> <laughs>